Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And notice where you feel the breathing process most prominently, where it's clearest, where it's the easiest to focus on. And let your attention settle there. And then you can allow the breath to find a rhythm that feels comfortable. If long breathing feels good, keep it up. If not, you can change. Short in, short out, or short in, long out, or long in, short out. Heavy, light, fast, slow, coarse or refined, deep or shallow. Get a sense of what the body needs right now. And if you're not sure, just pose that question in the mind. What kind of breathing would feel good right now? Each breath. And then see how the body responds. To settle in here, you have to have a sense of ease, a sense of well-being. If you're feeling tired, breathe in a way that feels more energizing. If you're feeling tense, breathe in a way that feels relaxed. Try to find the right balance. And when you've found what seems to be the right balance, see if you can maintain it. And if after a while it doesn't feel so good anymore, you can change again. You can keep this up throughout the hour. It may not seem like much, but you want to get the mind to feel at home here in the present moment. And that requires getting more sensitive to what it needs right here. What the body needs, what the mind needs. Now that right there involves three of what the Buddha calls the factors for awakening. The first is mindfulness, which means keeping something in mind. It doesn't mean bare awareness. It doesn't mean non-reactive attention or anything like that. It means remembering what you're here for. You're here because you see the mind needs to be trained. And part of the training is to get the mind to settle down. So you want to remember that. Don't forget. If you forget, the mind can wander off and then it'll take a long time for it to come back. So keep reminding yourself, right here, right here. And then the second quality, analysis of qualities, that's the discernment factor and the factors of awakening. Let's figure out what's needed right here. What's the point of balance? And what coming into the mind is skillful and what is unskillful? And if you see that something is skillful, like there's a moment of concentration or a few moments of concentration, those are to be developed. In other words, you keep doing them. If you're distracted, okay, recognize that as an unskillful state and then drop it. Come back to the breath. Each time you come back to the breath, try to reward yourself with an especially satisfying breath. And as you keep at this, this comes, turns into the third factor, which is persistence. Just keep at it again and again and again. There's effort, but it's effort in a sense of ease. The ease that the Buddha talks about has two factors, <clears throat> two, two facets. One is a sense of fullness. When you breathe in right now, what would feel full in the different parts of the body? Not full in the sense of a full stomach, but just the energy feels full. The blood flow thing feels unrestricted. Everything can flow smoothly throughout the whole body. The energy flows smoothly throughout the whole body. One technique you might try is notice your hands. Try to relax your hands as much as you can. And if you notice any slight little bit of tension in the hand, allow it to relax, relax, relax. And then when there's a sense of ease in the hands, see if you can maintain that as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Don't let the hands tense up with the in-breath or tense up at the end of a breath. 
just keep that sense of being open and ease and full right there. And then once there's that sense of fullness, allow it to spread up the arms into the chest. When there is that sense of fullness, and there's a sense of calm. As the mind grows calm, then you can get concentrated. In other words, you don't have to think so much about the adjusting the breath. Just be with that sense of fullness and ease, centered wherever in the body feels right to be centered. And the longer you stay here, then you have a sense that the ease is enough. You can let it go, you don't have, which means you don't try to hold it anymore. And the mind will settle down into a state of equanimity. And see if you can maintain that. Those are the seven factors for awakening. Mindfulness, analysis of qualities, persistence, rapture, calm concentration, equanimity. That's one of the ways the Buddha describes them. Sets them up in a line. He says you start with number one and you go through the list up to, up to number seven. That's a way of showing how mindfulness and discernment working together can bring the mind to concentration. The Buddha has lots of different ways of describing the order in which these things happen. Mindfulness always precedes concentration, but sometimes discernment comes first, then mindfulness and concentration, sometimes mindfulness, then concentration, then discernment, depending on whether he's talking in terms of the factors for awakening, the five strengths, the Eightfold Path. And it really depends on what kind of mind you have and what kind of mind state you have right now, because your needs will change. Sometimes you sit down and the mind just centers. Now the times you have to think your way to being calm. So this is an explanation of how to think about it a little bit. Directing your thoughts to the breath, asking questions about it, using your discernment to get the mind in the mood to settle down and feel at home here. There's another way, though, in which the Buddha explains the factors for awakening, and that's for you to use whichever way your mind is tending in a particular time when you're going to sit down. He says you start out with mindfulness, and then you notice, is the mind sluggish or is the mind overactive? If it's overactive, he said, go straight for the concentration. Don't think about things. Don't even worry about the rapture. Just go straight for the calm. Just do what you can to make sure the mind is not interested in anything but the breath right now. Other times, if you notice that you're getting sluggish, you're sitting here with a calm and you're beginning to doze off, or going into what John Lee calls delusion concentration, where the breath feels nice, everything is very still, but your focus gets very blurry. And when you come out, if you're asked, where are you, not, where were you right now, you're not really all that sure. That's a sign that your concentration needs more energy. That's when you go back to the analysis of quality, say, okay, what's wrong here? Is the breath too weak? Is the mind just simply getting lazy? Because one thing that can happen is you get with the breath and there's a sense of ease, and you drop the breath and you go for the ease. That's like earning money and a job, and then quitting the job and then going out and spending all your money. The money will last for a while, but then it's going to run out. And then you go back to the old boss, and if he's good-hearted, he'll take you on again. But you're never going to get a raise that way. In other words, if, when the sense of ease comes, you abandon the breath for the ease, the meditation is not going to develop very far. So to counteract that, you ask yourself, how do I stay more focused on the breath, which may involve breathing more heavily, 
before taking a quick survey through the body each time you breathe in. Go through the different parts of the body. One thing I've found is when you're getting drowsy, move the spot of your concentration every three breaths. Be at the middle of the head, middle of the chest, the stomach, in your hands, in your feet. Keep moving around. Sort of stir up the juices of the mind, stir up the blood. Whatever you find wakes you up. Whatever you find energizes you. That way you've got the energizing qualities, which are analysis of qualities, persistence, and rapture. And then when they've done their work, then the mind will settle down. So in this second way of using the factors for awakening, you can make it apply to times when the mind has to start with concentration, then move to discernment. Other times when it starts with discernment, it moves to concentration. You can use this pattern to analyze your concentration in either of these two ways. It gives you a handle on what you're doing, because you want to be able to read what's happening in the mind and get a sense of what's just right. If your thinking is too active, the mind's not going to really feel at home here. You won't be able to settle in to the present moment with enough solidity that can really see things clearly. If everything is too peaceful, too calm, you get very lazy. And all you can think about is hanging out with a sense of ease. Neither extreme is going to be good for the practice. You have to learn how to bring things into balance. And as with any balance, it's going to swing back and forth. But after swinging back and forth for a while, it should be able to find a point of just right, which is what you want. Because the mind needs both insight and tranquility to do the work that needs to be done. Without the tranquility, the mind's going to be hungry for other pleasures and going to keep thinking of some way to slip away from the concentration and find pleasure someplace else. Without the insight, it's not going to see where its ignorance is, where it doesn't understand what's going on inside. So we work on these two qualities together, insight, tranquility, concentration, and discernment. And then we can bring the mind in a state of right concentration, not only right, but just right. In Thailand, they use the image of a hunter. When you're hunting, you go out to a spot where you know the animals are going to be. And you have to sit there very quietly, because if you make any noise at all, you're going to scare them away. But if you're too quiet, you're not going to notice them. You start dozing off. So you have to be alert and still at the same time. They say that when anthropologists go and study hunting cultures, they try to learn the various skills of the, the people in the culture. Hunting is the hardest because it requires such balanced concentration. Well, that's what we're doing here. We're hunting down the defilements of the mind, the things that obscure its ability to see itself clearly. So to do that, you have to be very still, but very alert. To so do your best to bring these two qualities into balance, and then use the Buddha's teachings on the factors for awakening as a convenient checklist. So when something's not quite right, you can ask yourself, okay, what's missing? Then you can bring things into line.